Walter Krauss awakes with a start, his head pounding, but he's not where he just was. This is no underground tunnel system of an icy moon. This is the basement of his childhood home. His various instruments are strewn across the room. Auxiliary cables snake across the ground. And Walter has no idea why he's here. And then he can hear it. A sound that at first is distant, but then sounds closer. Almost as though it's right beside him. A banging. A fist slamming against something. A wall? It doesn't sound like the concrete of his basement. It rings ever so slightly. He can't get the sound out of his head. And then, just like that, he's back in those tunnels. The ever-present heat making the glacial walls next to him slick. Water pools at his feet. And in front of him lays a dead grazer. Breathing heavily, Walter tries to collect his thoughts. He must have been dreaming, drifting away for just a moment. Perhaps it was the flora here, the plants having some kind of psychedelic effect on him. Walter had certainly dabbled with psychedelics before, but what he just experienced was more vivid than any experience so far. He was there, and he can still remember that sound, that thumping, and concentrating, ignoring the hissing of steam and the bubbling waters nearby. He's sure he can still hear it, ever present in the background. Thud, thud thud. It must be the lack of sleep. Surely, that must be it. Looking down at the tablet PC in the side of his pack, he can see that it's getting later. And so, with that, he will trudge back to that opening. Jolder, Legionnaires, Rikon here, and welcome back to Cataclysm Aftershock, and what is set to be something of a different kind of episode for us here. I'll talk a little bit more about that at the end of today's episode. But for now, Walter has to focus. He just narrowly escapes getting trampled to death by a grazer down here. It had become incensed after being attacked by one of the seemingly intelligent life forms from this planet. And so, let's grab that crash axe, Walter, and let's make our way back on over towards the exit because we don't want to end up like this Fernandi here, slowly being cooked by the waters of this underground river. It is very hot here, so yeah. We we should get a move on. And we're effectively going to be trekking back the way that we came. And I know we've just discovered an underground river here. But I honestly don't think we're going to be able to handle the heat down here for too much longer. It is a ways for us to go to get back to the entrance. As you can see, we've covered a lot of ground here. And the way in is just back over here. And with it being six, we still have a while before the sun is going to set, but I think it's going to make a bit of sense for us to get back before we are losing too much light. Plus, it is going to take a while to cautiously navigate through here, trying to avoid the smoke and trying not to get too hot. There's so many corpses here, so many hevels. That would be fantastic for us to drag to the outside, but again, that is going to take us time that I don't think we have right this second. But hey, if there are some a little bit closer to the exit, we will look at taking them. We've, t we've killed so many of them to navigate our way through this cave here. I think Walter was hoping to find something other than just the Van Andy down here. Ideally, people, someone else surviving on this hostile planet. That, that would have been reassuring. But as of yet, it's just Walter. Walter and old transcriptions that have been left behind. Knowledge of what Sailors 4 once was. Seemingly, even before the Cataclysm, this was a backwater planet. Or, well, moon, should I say. And I think our equipment should be down here. Right or wrong? I, I know it's around here somewhere. Walter, where did you leave it exactly? Our suit is down here somewhere. I mean, <laughs> it it should be. We wouldn't have left it on the surface. Let's head back down. Oh, okay. <laughs> A few bits down there. Okay. And it doesn't look like anything here has defrosted. Actually, no, that's a lie. The forest honey has defrosted. Well, that's nice. It actually quenches us a little bit as well. And 
it's joyous. And we can see that that goes away pretty quickly because you want to kind of have these in smaller amounts where possible. But honestly, it's been a while since we've had any kind of calories, so I think that's going to be worth it. Having something to drink before we try and sleep would be a good idea as well, but uh, well, we're, we're soaked right now, and I think we're soaked in sweat more than anything. And I know our wounds don't look like super significant at this stage, but I think it's still going to be worth making sure that we treat everything properly. We've got more than enough bandages to be able to use the proper stuff on all of these. And we'll even use some of the antiseptic on our torso. And let's go for the right arm, leg, and head, just because they're a little bit more damaged than our left arm and right leg. Well, that ain't bad. We're in distracting pain at the moment, so we'll take something for that as well, just a coating. And then I think we'll try and see if we can get some sleep. We'll turn off the flashlight. And checking our temperature here, we we're at a pretty good temperature, maybe a little too warm. It says we're comfortable at the moment. As long as that doesn't fluctuate uh, beyond where we're at at the moment, we could always take off the exosuit and see um, how we're looking temperature-wise then. Still pretty much about the same. And all we got on is our tool belt and rucksack. I think it'd be more comfortable to sleep with that off anyway, so we're going to keep it off for the time being. That is, that's quite damaged now, isn't it? Yeah, it's kind of just hanging in there. Okay, Walter, shut those eyes. Clutching his pistol, Walter tosses and turns all night. His mind restless, but his wounds, thankfully, are healing. Sometimes he's too hot, sometimes he's too cold. But the strangest thing starts to occur to him down here. Even all this distance under the ice, he could swear on occasion that he could see a light through the glacier above him. It would come in waves, leaking through the many meters of ice. He played it off as nothing more than his tired mind, struggling to make sense of his environment. This was meant to be a place of security, somewhere that he could rest that would be warm. Yet every time he heard the smaller sound, he imagined packs of hevels tearing flesh from bone. Perhaps the caverns wouldn't be exactly what Walter hoped. Maybe in time, if he can make it comfortable enough. But right now he knows he's not going to sleep. Looking down at that tablet PC again, it is 5.46 a.m. Feeling parched? Walter, let's get you a drink. And thankfully we can. Everything has defrosted overnight. We're going to start, though, by having some spiced chops to begin with. Let's just have a look at this. Kibble... <laughs> Made for humans. A heavy dressing of spices makes it impossible to discern the original flavors it might have had. How wonderful. Let's have our spiced chops and we're gonna we're gonna eat all of those spiced chops there. And then let's go for a chocolate drink if we can. And ideally we will have some more of these drinks. We are going to be taking them with us. Uh, we'll be trying to drink them pretty quickly so that they don't uh, freeze again the second that we get up onto the surface. And yeah, we are going to be going back up onto the surface. We're going to be drinking the canned drinks before we try and go for the water because the water, it's not going to go off. So that'll be fine. So let's get that exosuit back on first of all, and then the cryo suit and your cryo mask. Okay. We're just going to wait here, maybe like another five minutes, just hoping that um, his fullness will start to pass so that we can drink a little bit more. We'll go for a crispy cranberry, and then we're just going to have to try some others in a little bit. I think for today's journey, we are going to try and make it back over towards where this gas engine is, so that we can have a closer look at that. And we're not leaving anything but the mattress, right? And a few of the drinks, yep, that's, that's fine. So, we're going to activate our suit and the cryo mask, and then step back up onto the surface. To the southwest, we're seeing a grazer up on the surface? Yeah, we are. And it's really injured as well. Let's follow it. Is there anything hunting it? Where is it now? Okay, it's over towards our west. It seems okay. I mean, other than its injuries. Strange. And of course, over here towards the west, we have this great big ravine. And you know what? Let's let's head on over towards the edge of it. We're close enough that I think we should check it out. We are dealing with a whiteout at the moment though, so I think that is going to affect how much we're actually able to see on the overmap. Oh, and it just went to clear. Okay, I'll take that. As we step onto the edge there, Walter looks down at the ravine below. And, ooh, hello. That's a robot dispatch center. 
Okay, we've got somewhere to check on the way back, and yet another sinkhole, which I imagine that one probably does connect up to this section of sinkholes. Are we seeing anything down below the ravine bottom? Nope. <laughs> I don't even know how far down that all goes, but it looks like it goes for a way. We are actually able to see right down to the very bottom of it here. What once was probably a great river that carved through this world, or not. And that's the interesting thing. What could create these ravines, if not water, over time? It could be stress. These could be great fractures in the ice rather than something that has naturally been worn down over time. And it's not a completely straight drop-off, is it? We can see it kind of is a little jagged along the way. So it's not smooth like it's been worn down by water. Okay, Robot Dispatch Center. It's not too far from Leominster. I'm a little concerned with our level of tiredness at the moment, but I think we will manage. Oh, and we're satisfied now. Okay, that's good. That means that we can consume more. So we're gonna go in for something that's gonna quench us as much as possible. The Diet Tropical Soda is gonna help us out there. That's good. We're full again. Um, We'll go for some cream soda as well. All right, still thirsty. We'll get down the rest before too long. Oh, and we're back to a whiteout again, <laughs> just as we get close to the dispatch center. We'll start to go a little slower. And you know what? Let's um, get the laser rifle out, just in case. I feel like that's maybe a safer option for us. Ah, okay. We are seeing a manhack and a rat snatcher nearby. Where exactly? Oh, we're seeing ruins down to the south here. Oh, okay. No, we're seeing a whole nother town here. Williston. Well, we've got some formless ruins. We have aquacultural and an augmentation clinic and yet another robot dispatch center so let's first of all check over this body here nothing and then we'll get closer to this dispatch hello friend and see if we actually have a way in here or not we might not actually well we're looking for vents we're looking for anything like that you know what maybe we can get through here no Broken habitat window shutters. It's it's broken, but we can't climb in through it at the moment. Let's go for our crash axe, and let's see if we can maybe uh, smash through this window here. Doesn't look like we're going to be able to. Yeah, don't seem to be damaging the shutters. Okay, so we're not we're not cracking this chestnut. So I suppose we'll start making our way down towards the other one, see if we have any chance with that, and then we'll deal with the skitterbots and whatnot. Oh, okay, we do have a way through this one. Interesting. Some of them we seem to be able to get into, others, no. And we got some bots. Let's see if we have anything else of use here. Got some broken ones too. And what have we got? Structural images. Okay, well, we got ours and it's still good at the moment. Uh, this card reader is broken, so that's no use. But we can get upstairs, which is going to give us a little bit more sight of the surrounding area. Got ourselves a soldering iron. And I think just kind of server rooms here. Um, I will probably want to still check with the imager just what is up in, in this direction. So let's see. Let's get you and kind of cast it out in that direction. Okay, so maybe kind of a living space, office space, something like that. Got solar panels on the outside there. We're not going to be able to get into here easily either. It's reinforced glass here. Yeah, we're not going to get through that. So let's see. Have we been able to spy anything else? No. It's pretty barren, but it's interesting how close Williston is to Leominster. Yeah, well, okay, down we go. And let's see what the ruins have in store for us. And we are seeing a regenerator and a scavenger right away down to the southeast. So let's look at dealing with them before we, no doubt, deal with the rat snatchers and everything else. So getting a little bit closer here. Ah, uh, there's a few of them. Okay, so let's just try and get the attention of the... Ooh, there's a lot of them in actual fact. Just all around the beds here. Okay, all right. I really want to get the... There we go. The regenerator's in interest first. Okay, get a little bit closer. Let's check that range. We'll go for a precise shot from this distance. <laughs> okay, Sailors 4 antivirus. 10 out of 10 moxies killed. Excellent. Just enough damage to take that one down, it would seem. Okay, so let's see. We'll smash your remains and we'll check you over. Caffeinated chewing gum, fantastic. We are going to have that right away. Oh, it's frozen. We can't. <laughs> well, all right then. That's, that's fine. Okay, come on. See us already. Come on. Come on. There we go. We've got one. We've got two. Okay, 
more than we would like. Oh, the explosion, oh so good. And it only did 26 damage, but I think the explosion, I feel like it did more. Um, okay, ready for another strike here? Let's go. And these are just pulses that we're doing at the moment. So not even like the three second or two second sequence, the pulses, they're a lot faster and I don't think it's gonna consume as much energy or heat up the laser rifle as much. Oh boy, come on, we've nearly got it. That'll do it. And obviously the noise is more than loud enough to get the attention of those scavengers who are now, I think, just kind of around those bodies there. I imagine them tearing into what little of their flesh remains. Yeah, that sounds about right. They're just kind of pushing over each other here. How's that rifle looking? I think it's good to go. We are? Okay, good. So, getting a little closer here, we might be able to get them from this angle. Okay, let's give that a shot. And it goes wide. Unfortunate, we'll just take a second, make sure that the rifle doesn't get too hot. And we got the attention of just the one so far. That's ideal. We have another shot that goes wide. We'll let it get a little closer. Excellent. Nice big explosion. We can still see two other scavengers at the moment. No, nope, just the one now. Okay, I think it just took a second for it to refresh. Okay, a grazing hit. The explosion certainly did some damage to it. Okay, so we're not seeing the full explosion damage because it didn't tell us how much damage it did to it, but we certainly did some before. Okay, it's frantically overheating now, so let's not shoot that again. We're just gonna wait here a moment or two before we start to move up. And let's make sure that we just change to this so that we can smash the bodies. And I will change back right away. I, I do promise. <laughs> I promise I'll actually do it this time. Okay, some more caffeinated chewing gum. I mean, we might be able to heat it up. It seems like overkill, I know. Oh, we do actually have some energy cola though, don't we? Hang on, before I get too distracted, back to brawling. There we go. Look, I remembered. Yeah, energy cola. We will have that, thank you. And let's see what we got going on over here. Magellan suits, they're very nice, but we can't power them right now. Let's continue through the rest of the runes here. Ready for anything that might try and pop out at us. And honestly, right now, I am actually more interested in the runes than I am uh, what we might find elsewhere around here. Okay, so I'm not gonna go for a precise, just because, uh, well, it's too close at the moment. So we're just gonna go for a few regular aimed shots. That's enough to take down that one there. We do need to be a little bit cautious that our laser rifle is gonna start to get hotter. Oh boy, that'll do. And oh boy, it's frantically overheating at the moment. So let's see. We are gonna go back onto the paneling because that's going to allow us to move a little bit faster, I say, as it catches up with us near immediate. The snow is gonna slow us down, so we need to be a little wary of that. Okay, here we go. And let's just wait for it to uh, kind of reappear. Okay, it's back down here at the moment. Come on, let's get ready, let's go. Precise, excellent, and another shot takes it out. Okay, how are we looking on charge at the moment? We are nearly out. I don't think I brought extra ammunition with us because I wasn't planning on this uh, escapade. These things will happen. So if we start to run out, then we are just gonna have to pull the plug and head back or try to move around without um, stirring up a hornet's nest. I'm not so interested in just the suits right now, so we're gonna see if we can find some other things. Um, we'll go back to brawling for the moment. I'm fine with using the rifle to do a little bit of light bashing. Checking out the rest of the runes so far, not seeing anything of interest. Oh, we're hearing some noises, okay. And we're seeing a, oh, a tangler. Right, so 200 charge, we use about, what, 50 per shot, I think, maybe? We wanna go for a precise strike here if we can. That would be ideal. There we go, that's precise. And yeah, we're using 50 per shot at the moment, so we might be able to take down just this one here. Oh boy, yep, we can, but that's it, I believe. Oh no, we did. We did have two more shots. Okay, we had one that wasn't completely used up yet. That's good. Okay, watch for explosions, please. Watch for explosions. Okay, and we are definitely hearing more noises around us now. Okay, let's just wait. I mean, that's the, that's the two shots that this thing had, so we can't really afford to be fighting anything else right now. So let's get out of here, Walter. It's time to, it's time to move. I don't think that we're gonna find any other ammunition unless we find it in the ruin here. And generally, well, there are going to be things around that stuff. Okay, let's just try and see if we can lose its uh, line of sight on us. 
that would be ideal kind of backed into a corner right now i'm not exactly a fan of that we are just going to wait until we get a little bit of our breath back okay we managed to get all of it that's great so it's lost track of us for the moment okay stepping out onto the street what have we got going on here don't have any manholes in the center by the looks of things so no hiding underground here i think that we're probably just gonna have to look at heading back home before too long there is a manhole here but i don't know if there's much that we can do about it got a rat snatcher and a broken cyborg around over to the east at the moment right okay so let's just head back up this way for the moment we're going to turn on safe mode and i think we're going to start to head back in the direction of leominster we need more laser rifle ammunition if we're going to try and deal with the problem makers here should have enough charge in our mask to make it back there without too much trouble okay we are seeing a man hack at the moment so let's just get a little bit more distance here we should be totally fine well i say that i hope that and there we go safe mode is back on we're going to start our journey back to our town oh and let's just maybe change out to the safe foot <laughs> because the laser rifle can't really do anything for us right now and here we are back on familiar streets the quiet streets of leominster thankfully it has stayed that way so far let's get back into our uh, lab here so first things first we are gonna have a look at getting that laser rifle reloaded and that's a nice fresh magazine in there that's good so we probably want to try and take some more of these power cartridges with us the bootleg ones actually look like they have a little bit more power in them but i'm sure that they're not going to be as effective we'll take the compact power cartridge and i think we're going to keep the magna driver on us as well um it does mean that we're going to be over encumbered so let's see if we can drop off anything else at the moment ah oh, the salvage crossbow yeah that has us looking totally good all right and it looks like we can still drink some more and thankfully i guess our body heat has kept some of these things from completely freezing over let's have some of the h2o here get nice and slaked hydrated even we're actually considered to be slightly overweight at the moment which is wild walter congratulations that's a that's a good position to be in and you know what i think just out of safety's sake we are going to put a new battery into our cryo mask here let's go for one of those nice medium medium batteries yeah that charge will hold for a while there i know that i said that i wanted to head back to have a look at the gas engine for the power armor but i think i'd also like to see what we might have down here to the south around the ravine we've got williston that we can put on a list of things to explore but for now we're going to head out and have a look at another ravine and we're going to be doing so with our laser rifle in hand and we have reached yet another ravine edge and it looks like this one kind of starts just over to the west of cavendish and runs further towards the south let's set ourselves off in this direction here because it's nice and early in the day and surprisingly it's nice and clear out it does give us an opportunity to do a little bit of exploration to see if we can discover anything else around us we could follow the ravine for a little while but i think we're just going to start to try and carve across the landscape a little bit walter just surveying the area around him with his binoculars it looks like we've got some hydrothermal flats down here but nothing else as of yet and uh, <laughs> i think we accidentally took in a little bit of smoke back there while we were making our way through the flats uh, that has passed though and yeah nothing else around that one yet more flats and more desolate landscape we're just going to start to cut in now up towards the northwest to see if we Ooh, hello i was going to see if we can meet up with this ravine and start to head back through williston but we do have something out here a house and we can see a congregation not too far from there so let's approach but we don't want to get too close we want to observe what's going on from a distance and we're seeing a lot of z's in that direction northborough yeah so there is a large congregation of people of things in this little settlement here so we're going to approach very cautiously as we can see scavengers moving around some of the homes there okay walter we've got the first one starting to approach us and it seems like they can see much better in this nice clear light we're going to take a precise shot at that one missing unfortunately we can't really afford to miss right now oh okay the next shot takes the regenerator down okay 
So we're getting a little closer here. We're going to let this one uh, start to near us. And then we'll take our precise shot. Ah, a grazing hit. We need better than that. And 32 is a little bit better. And there we go. And we've got caffeine pills on this one, which are frozen, but we might be able to take them. We can. There we go. Let's go knock back all of those. Might be a little bit too much in the way of stimulants, but uh, we'll see how that uh, turns out for Walter. Smash the other corpse here. And okay, that cleared out that amount there. We've got another maintenance outpost here as well. Okay, let's just weave our way through here and see what we're dealing with. Making his way down the center of this desolate street. We're not seeing any other regenerators right this second, but they were certainly around here. Let's see if we can pop this real quick. Pry? Okay. And any way down, it becomes blocked off. That's fine. Strange. We're not seeing sight of the creatures anymore. Not through our binoculars. Almost as though they're hiding. Hiding in these homes? Well, let's crack it open and find out, Walter. Let's turn on your flashlight and make sure that this place is clear. Check the kitchen for anything that we want to use. Sometimes we can find some things that we can eat right away, but as of yet, that's not the case. More bedrooms, lots of bedrooms. All the housing here seems to be shared, you know, company housing. Let's crack that open, climb back outside. I don't think we're gonna find anything good in these homes. We are still searching for answers. If we can find any of them, that'd be grand. Yet again, pretty quiet in there. So, onto these ruins then. Okay, and we've got a, uh, pillar, cryo pillar there, some slurry, and not much else. All right, we do have an astro lab here, but yeah, just more homes. So there were, there were only two scavengers here, yet from a distance, it looks like there was a lot more. Let's see what this uh, outpost has going on. And oh, okay, well, it definitely has a scavenger problem. They all just fell off a ledge. I do wonder if this maintenance outpost is having the same strange issue as the other one where it's kind of like on top of itself. It's the best way I can describe it. Okay, wow, they all saw Walter then, apart from one of them. Okay, that's not great, um, because obviously our rifle can become overheated quite quickly. So let's see how we go. An explosion would be fantastic. Okay, we managed to hit it but it just carried on behind it. It hit the one all the way back there. Amazing. I mean, great that it still did something. Um, we're not having a lot of luck, I say, as the explosion takes that one out. Wonderful. Okay, we're gonna go for our current aim, which apparently is not good enough. That's really surprising. Okay, this should be a little bit better. There we go. And it is, 50 damage is great. We'll take that. 100 monsters killed. Sentinel, Walter the Sentinel. And I think that is taking into account the other creatures that he's killed. Uh, we're gonna start to back up and just wait for our laser rifle to cool down a little bit. Thankfully, we are gonna be faster than these things. So as long as we've got, um, you know, ammo in our cartridge, I feel safe. I know I shouldn't probably feel that way, but uh, yeah, Walter, well done. Smash the corpse and let's start to move up towards the others. We are aware that there is still another out here, and it's strange. We can still target the corpses. Some low-grade myth. You know what? Sure. Walter, we're going to take that wine as well. Looks like we had a wine mom here. Yeah, yeah, that's very strange that we can target the corpses, but hey. All right, on to the next scavenger. And we really want to make sure that we are getting a nice, precise strike. And following it up, you're gonzo. Okay, now anyone else here we've got 750 left in the tank at the moment okay i don't think it's done the double kind of spawn although some of this area is covered oh our flashlight's turned on yeah no i think it's done it again so maybe maybe it's meant to be that way but it's strange because there's no staircases you know um let's take one of these pressurized foam guns because I'm intrigued to see how they play, because we really haven't had a chance to play around with them too much. They're a bit on the heavy side, unfortunately. We've got acetylene torches here, and we also have welding tanks. That's very, very nice. I don't know if we've come across welding goggles yet, though. I'm not sure. But that is a very nice find for Walter. We will take those. Thank you very much. We don't need two torches. One is totally good enough. I'm just going to haul that out to here for now. We'll stop hauling for just a moment. Um, yeah, because we might be able to use the foam to help us climb, because we know that we can climb up here. I do feel like it's a mistake, because um, I feel like there would be staircases 
leading up there if we were meant to be able to get up there. Looks like all of the um, mattresses have been stripped from here. We've got a Spinosaurus plushie, cute, holding a fish, probably saving it for later. You know what? Stuff it into your backpack, Walter. Why not? Why not? Let's see if there's anything else hidden away here. Seemingly no. And I don't think I just missed a staircase with the last one. Um, we will try and check to see if there's anything else hidden away in here. All the standard equipment that we've seen so far. Got a full-on recharging station here, which is very nice if we can find something to hook it up to. As of yet, we have not found that. And here we have the bathrooms. Okay, so let's see. Does this protect us from glare? I wonder. Could it work like welding goggles? Keeps the glare out of your eyes. That's sun glare. Maybe? Because if we could if we could carve into that, that would be super fun. So let's take both of those for now and see if that's actually a possibility. So acetylene torch needs at least eight charges, so let's reload it. There we go. And cut metal need welding goggles to do that. Very unfortunate. Okay, so um, where did we climb last time? Was it here or was it over here? Let's wield the foam gun and see if we can do something with that. Okay, so let's just have a look at the top. Right, I think if we try and make stuff like either side of here, then that should give us a corner that we can climb up. So uh, I also don't know how much foam this is going to do as well. I guess we'll see. We'll go precise here. Okay, and that is that is foam creed. So it does it does seem to work as you might think it would. Okay, can we now climb up there? Might need to have some furniture here as well for us to stand on. So one of the desks. Let's give that a look. All right, not from this angle. So what we're going to do is this instead. We're going to foam here, and then we're going to foam here. And nada. <laughs> oh, oh, because we can just we can just stand on it. Um, the foam creep really ain't doing much other than can you could you use it to build like a walkway? Like maybe. Okay. But yeah, it doesn't, it doesn't really help us in this scenario, unfortunately. Uh, can we like push it out the way? No, we can't grab it either. Interesting. Okay, well, we're going to drop that for the moment and we'll also drop some of the other things. The settling torch we're going to drop off for now. And uh, yeah, if we're going to climb, we need to grab some stuff from inside here. And yeah, okay, we can climb here. There we go. Up on the roof. Strange as it is. Yeah. Okay. Very, very strange. And we are seeing another town in the distance there. But nothing else as far as the eye can see. Well, let's see what we got up here, Walter. Looks like we got some more tanks. Foamcrete, maybe? Yeah, it is. Okay. And over here, more duct tape. Duct tape for days. Got some work gloves. More duct tape. A suit. Broken robot. And cardboard and stuff. Walking out cautiously across here. Um, we weren't able to climb on top of this last time we tried. And I don't think we're going to be able to again because it's just kind of open air. So as much as I would want to be able to get in there, I don't think that's going to be possible without us having welding goggles or something else of the like. So we got to get back down and we're going to try and do that as cautiously as we can. Now I didn't put a table beneath there. I probably should have done that. That would make it a little bit safer for us. But here we are. We're going to drop off our pack and we are just going to hope that climbing down doesn't hurt and it doesn't yay <laughs> we got lucky there okay so we're still going to bring these back with us these settling torch the foam crete i don't think that we're going to worry about but uh yeah thanks for the stuff outpost we're going to mark it as explored because we've kind of cleared it northborough does have the astro lab and there's a small possibility that we could find some more things in williston so i think we are going to have a look at that before we head back to leo minster because hey we are going to have to sleep before too long Hang on a second. Um, so we just traveled all the way back here. You hear thweet. That was back at the other place we heard thweet. Like someone blowing a whistle. That's strange. Weird. So that was all the way back uh, near Northborough. Very, very strange. Okay, well, laser rifle, let's get you back out in hand. We're going to check the rest of these ruins. Looks like we've got a scavenger. Oh, more than one scavenger. The regenerator seems to maybe be a little bit faster. Hard to tell. Okay, steady up. And let's strike out. We're going to try and go for this one first, the scavenger. And let's go for a two second pulse this time around. Oh boy. Yeah, that does some damage. Um, did it damage you though? It didn't seem to. Okay, steadying. 
Wicked. <laughs> That's a great result. Okay, we're gonna let that cool down. Bash both the bodies. We don't seem to be damaging the rifle at the moment, using it to bash them, so that's good. Let's check this body as well. Nada. Okay. Oh, we've got some movement, and it's a regenerator. Okay, so running away, get that distance, and we've got two regenerators actually. Okay, precise strike does it. Wow. And we actually damaged some of its uh, equipment there with that explosion. And these explosions, they're pretty loud. I feel like if there's anything else around, it's going to come for us. And sure enough, that seems to be happening. Okay. Precise on you. Oh, okay. Not an explosion, but enough to take it out. That's good. We love to see it. Now, precise on you. Okay. Not quite enough there, but we do get two quick shots in. I think we'll probably just try and change to the single fire mode at the moment. Just the pulse. Okay. And fire away. A grazing hit. Okay, let's wait a second here then. Start to steady up yet again because our laser rifle is getting really hot at the moment. So no, we're gonna we're gonna run back, get some more distance. We're completely out of stamina now, so we're completely out of options. We need these shots to hit. We need them to land. Walter, come on. Okay, that's a good start. Let's go for another and another. Okay, yet again, it is frantically, frantically overheating. So we're gonna try and give it a second or two here. I don't think we can give it a second, really. We've only got one more shot in here, and it's right in front of us. Okay, so dropping that to the ground as fast as he can, he draws out the pistol as the scavenger draws closer, and oh boy, it is strong. It's already healing. Firing the safe hurt, we miss our first few shots. It strikes at Walter's chest. Come on, Walter. 27 damage. Not bad. Another 13. 23. It's heavily bleeding at this stage but it's also still recovering at the same time. We're trying to avoid these attacks where we can. Oh, okay, it's quite hurt now. We just need to follow up. 21, damn it. We've only got eight shots left in here at the moment. We need these to land, come on. Heavy arterial bleeding. Another, another shot misses, and there we go. You did it, you did it. Take a deep breath, a real deep breath. As another scavenger appears, yeah, stop catching your breath. Okay, where is it exactly? It's quite a distance away. Okay, so I think we've got time to do some moves. First of all, let's reload the laser rifle. Nothing to reload. That's a lie. Let's pick it back up, put the pistol away, and try and reload this. Did we not grab the other power cartridges? I guess the compact one doesn't work with it. Okay, okay, but we do have the magnet driver with us. Should we choose to use that? Oh boy, and we've already got this thing on us. Okay, that's, that's not great. I think we're just gonna have to drop the laser rifle and try and get the magnet driver out. Uh, but we're gonna need some distance to be able to do that. So let's take off at a sprint. Man, this thing is kind of keeping up with us. Magnet driver. Okay, this thing is going to make a big explosion. We really only have one chance to get this before we are also enveloped in it. Okay, that'll do, Walter. That'll do. Back up, get away. We're gonna go back for our laser rifle in just a second. Don't you worry, we're gonna catch our breath first though. Okay, his ears are ringing after all that, as you might imagine. So, let's give these bodies their final rests. Antipsychotics! We might need some of those. Okay, let's get our laser rifle back. Uh, we're just going to put it back into our pack for now. And let's see, did we have another magazine for the safe hurt? Uh, we've got empty, or just rather separate rounds, so that's good. We'll put them in there. That's reloaded. Okay. I don't like the idea of us doing more of this fight without having our laser rifle, you know, uh, fully charged and ready to go. I'm not hearing a lot going on in there at the moment, but I feel like we've had some close calls. I did just see something. It's a broken cyborg and it is coming for us. Okay. Well then, I guess we're dealing with you. Okay. It's going to be the Magda driver. Um, it's a little bit of overkill for sure, certainly, but uh, I'm not taking any more chances. Let's go precise if we can. I think we've got just enough to get there. That'll do. 90 fam 95 damage will do. Okay, yeah. Um, oh boy, there's another. Okay, well, we didn't hear it because of our ears being shot and, well, it's gonna get worse. Okay, and there we go. Another down. I think we just keep going. Yep, those bodies will eventually rise back up again, but Walter, it's time to move. Now that he's a little bit further away, we're just gonna wrap a bandage around that uh, left leg wound and the torso wound and he's back in Leominster once again still tired still well surprisingly fresh all things considered let's head inside let's get out the snow 
I want to see if we can deal with your mild pain. Before that though, we are going to reload the laser rifle, or we're not. Apparently we don't have anything to reload it with. Let's just double check down here. Oh, uh, no we did. Okay, the cartridges were just down here. Right, I see, I see. And damn, it is howling outside at the moment. So, it's good to be in here. Let's take one of the massive, massive supplies of aspirin we've got. And by one, I mean like three. And then, I think we're going to try and use some of these batteries here to have a proper sleep if we can, because we just couldn't down in those tunnels. I think Walter's earned it. So, let's just keep maybe the safe in hand, just to give him a little bit of comfort as he crawls upstairs, closing the door behind him, shutting himself out of the rest of the world. You really didn't have anything else up here? Oh no, it was up here you were sleeping, wasn't it? You got the emergency blanket there. Right, okay. Uh, where is the light source in this room? I don't think I ever figured that out exactly. Well, maybe, maybe the light won't disturb him. We'll see. Walter, rest your head. And into a deep sleep he falls. In his dreams, that sound comes back to him again, thumping. And through his eyelids, while he rests, he can see light sweep across them. A beacon, almost, calling out to him. What does it mean? He doesn't know. But so much of Salus, so much of this dead world, is unknown to him. Comfortably drifting, his suit keeping him warm, the light of Salus's star slips below the ice, the world freezing just that little bit more. As Walter finally opens his eyes, the light has vanished, yet it was coming from the south, slipping through the door right in front of him. Keeping his pistol close, he stalks down the hallway, making his way outside. The light he was seeing was out here somewhere, distant, not in the town. And while it might not seem wise to head out late at night, there is something in Walter, something that recognizes the beckoning of that light. Let's put the pistol back away for now, into the bag, and let's keep that laser rifle close as we make our way out into the night. We'll be closing things up behind us to make sure that nothing wanders in. The lights here still working somehow, and onto the street we go. Still, it's quiet and we are not seeing very far at all. Our sight is limited to a tiny circumference, so we can improve that by turning on our flashlight. That's better. The street is quiet, and that distant light, he can't see it anymore. But surely it wasn't coming from the town here. He's already cleared it. There's nothing else here. No one else here. Further south then. So, onto the ice field we go. Further still, to the south, into the dark, the unknown, further, and then we can see something. Well, first of all, a body on the ice, but there's something on our mini-map that we can see. The light of Walters reflects off of something in the distance. Let's investigate this body first of all. Why exactly would you be wearing all of this out in the freezing cold? Nothing has made sense about these corpses that Walter has found strewn around here. He thought originally that they might have been the inhabitants of Salus, perhaps not. Further south, he travels as you can see an edge to the glacier and water, water in front of him. A straight edge, like it's been carved through the ice. And how far does it go? It has a corner. We have yet another body, a child, frozen. Let's follow the edge of this, Walter. It appears to be a square. The water looks cool <laughs> and there's something in it okay we have right here an amphibious truck one that has gasoline one that has battery it's leaking but it's together let's walk further around and it's the same on this other side we're not seeing anymore we can't see into the center of it and <laughs> while our suit would keep us warm swimming in waters like this deep water that is would not be wise. We would sink to the bottom like a rock. Below it, he can make out part of the glacial ice wall. The strangest thing is though, all of this, all of this was not here when Walter came walking earlier to the amphibious truck then. And uh, yeah, how are you gonna manage this buddy? Because we can't 
climb into the water, we're going to have to go through the cargo space in the back here and maybe smash our way in through the windshield. That'd be the only way to actually get up towards the driver's seat. And there are controls there, so let's see. Okay, I was hoping it might open, but it doesn't seem like that. Doesn't seem like that's going to happen. So, can we smash it? Well, we can try, can't we? There we go. Okay, don't get cut. Walter climbs into the front, into the driver's seat of this thing. Let's turn the ignition. It starts up. <laughs> 48% fuel. So, to the center then, there is something here. Walter's light illuminating it. A building in the center of all of this. Okay, he's fumbling the controls a little bit here, so let's be cautious. That lines up perfectly with a dock, some long ropes strewn across it. Okay, let's let go of the controls. Catch your breath. And he's getting warm. The compartment of this truck is sealed just enough to be able to keep in some of the heat, it would seem. At least, surely that's what I'm thinking. Yeah, across the board we're looking a little bit better, but still feeling um, the warmth of that cab. Okay, the light has illuminated a door, and looking upwards, it's a tower stretching up high. Not just any tower, it is a lighthouse. This must have been the source of the light. There's a plastic fish trap here, and some fish bait over here. There is a radio and we're hearing noise, shuffling from above. There's something dead up there, up this tower. Okay, so with caution, Walter takes another step, a kitchen and a nightmare. Okay, so holy crap. <laughs> oh my God. Looking out of the window, there is something very familiar on the other side of the glass, a relentless hulk stares at Walter, his pursuer, not from Salus, but from his own world, now stares at him. A hulking zombie, swollen to the size of six men, its inky black eyes are locked on him. No matter how far he runs, it always seems to find him. And here it is. Walter, hold that laser rifle firm. It's standing on the outside of glass, but I'm pretty sure that's just regular glass there. We have a precise shot, and Walter takes it. It explodes, hitting the Relentless Hulk for 47 damage. It's hurt, and its torso is on fire, and it's regenerating. Its body is sealing up as I speak. Yup, it's completely healthy again. Let's go. Round two. Steady up again. It hasn't made its way through the glass yet. Another shot. Impacts it. And it does good damage, setting its torso ablaze, and it just continues to heal. Do we dare climb higher? It's a chance to put some distance between us and it. It may very well be the right option. Can we see it from this angle here? Can we get outside at all? Not easily. But Walter has killed this thing once before, and he can do that again. If he can get a good angle, yes, the laser rifle can shoot through that glass, but I think it just as easily could smash through it and tear us to pieces. So higher we go. We see broken generators, old machinery, and then we find ourselves at the very top. There is a way to the outside. Let's open that. Stalking around the edge. Can we see it from here? I don't think we can. Looking down, it's difficult to make it out. If we had a light source that we could drop down there though, that might give us everything that we need. The tablet PC, or alternatively, the candle. Neither are going to give a huge amount of light, and I don't think that Walter feels like sacrificing his flashlight. Let's start with the tablet PC then. Let's activate it, turn the screen on, and try and drop it over the edge. Okay, there it goes, dropping down below. It should be at the bottom here now. Can't quite see it though. We can't quite see if Walter's pursuer is still there. You know what? We may very well need to look at something more heavy duty. Its fuel source is solid hydrogen. And while that's not gonna pass through glass, it would destroy glass and then potentially destroy anything else on the other side. Walter, turn your flashlight off for now. I'm gonna stalk back down in the darkness, hoping that that thing out there can't see us. Oh, but we can see it. I think it can still see us actually. Yeah, yeah, okay. So let's just stand back here for a moment. Do we dare take the shot? 
If we can follow it up with another soon afterwards, we may be able to do enough damage to it to kill it outright. I feel like we gotta try. Holding down on the trigger, we blast through the glass, hitting the Relentless Hulk. The Cyan Flame blasts it. And there was actually an EMP blast that ended up happening there. Let's fire again as quickly as we can. Just a careful shot, and that's a direct hit. Walter can't hear the explosions, but we can. Unfortunately, the wooden stairs are, well, encased in faint plasma right now. The Hulk has smashed through the glass, and it's approaching fast. Let's take another shot. Maybe wait a second. That's considered careful aim. We fire again. The kitchen cabinets are torn apart. A direct hit. The Hulk is slowing. One more good hit, Walter. May just be able to do it. Steadying up. Getting ready for a precise strike. Walter fires. Oh, and it's still alive. The Magna Driver is nearly overheating in his hand. This thing is nearly dead. One more shot. And that does it. The Magna Driver is screaming at Walter. He tosses it to the side as the plasma starts to fade. Walter can take a deep breath. Somewhere among the rubble, there is a body and yeah, there it is. Picking through the splintered wood, the very same thing that stalked him in his hometown found him here. And here's the thing, I don't think that the Hulk was here to begin with because it would have seen us when we pulled up with our light on. I think it was higher. I think it dropped to that location. I think it came from above. <sighs> Let's have a look at that tablet PC. It's, it's still kind of, kind of working after all of that. I imagine the EMP blast wasn't good for it. We'll turn off the screen as Walter just waits for a moment, staring at the destruction, his ears ringing. Let's uh, grab that back. It seems like it's cooled down. Moving over towards the armchair, let's just take a moment, waiting for his hearing to return. And there, his ears stop ringing. But as they do stop, they're replaced by that sound, the thumping. Once again, it is coming from upstairs, leaving the remains of this mighty thing behind. Walter starts the march upwards, his footsteps echoing throughout the tower, reaching the pinnacle of the lighthouse again. Walter can make out a monitor that was not there before. Code streaming across its screen and a altar with glowing tendrils either side of it, gently waving back and forth, spilling light on the floor. And the altar, a fleshy protuberance juts from the floor, its sides covered in scaled oozing skin. The surface is flat, but undulates softly. A handful of unidentifiable appendages reach from the sides, suggesting a sort of nightmarish living autodoc. Removing his cryo mask to see with his own eyes, Walter approaches the monitor, staring at the information scrolling across the screen. The thumping sound is coming from here, from this very monitor. And as Walter starts to focus, his vision shifts, the room around him changing. As Walter slowly comes to, he retches, pulling back some strange organic apparatus off his face, an umbilical stretching out from the walls, and the space is just illuminated by a flashlight laying next to a dead man. The umbilical he detached from himself is attached to two others in close proximity to him. In a tiny cell beside him, the unconscious but still living forms of Major General May Crockett and Carmen Moulton. The names enter his mind and he realizes he knows them. He is connected to them in some way. The thudding enters Walter's mind again as he starts to regain more of his senses. To the south of him, through the gaps in his resin cage, he can make out an individual reaching through the gaps in hers. He too somehow knows her name, Hilma Baron. She's trying to reach out for the still lifeless body laying close to her cell. Her hands are red, bloodied. All around him, Walter can hear the voices of others calling out for help. And then their flashlight finally goes out. The space now only illuminated by glowing tendrils and sparking fronds. He realizes 
He knows the dead man's name, Winslow. He knows not how these things have come to live in his mind, and he knows not how he got here. The cold of Sailor's Four is long gone. Looking at the umbilical that was attached to him, was he ever truly there? Reaching down to the umbilical, now laying at his feet, peering into its depths, he can see a light cautiously bringing it closer to his face. That light reveals the frozen, frigid landscape of Sailor's Fall. Shock starts to take over his system as he continues to hear that thudding from the south. The other prisoner, Hilma, throwing herself at the risen cell ineffectively as waves of dread start to overcome his mind. He places the apparatus, the umbilical, back over his face again. And just like that, he's back in his childhood basement again. The feel of the couch, just how he remembers it. The smell of sweat in the room. From an intense band practice earlier in the day, it's all so real. But now, Walter realizes it isn't. It's a lie. But right now, it's a comfortable lie. He hears his mother's voice call to him from upstairs. He knows that dinner's only half an hour away. A comfort overcomes him. Yet laying there on that couch, Walter cries. <sighs> and with that, Legionnaires, our chapter here in Aftershock will be coming to a close. Now I'm sure that to some of you that will be a shock, but it's been something that I've been thinking about long and hard over the last few weeks. When I started this series, I was eager to see exactly what Aftershock had to offer. And while I do think it has some fantastic potential, it's not quite there yet for a full series. I have loved exploring Sailor's Four with Carmen, May, and Walter. Yet, after digging into the files and seeing what some of the possibilities were for what we could expect to see, unfortunately, much of the world is dead and barren. And for the most part, that's totally fine. But unfortunately for this series, it will make it a little too repetitive. And so I made the decision to expand upon our story. And so set about to create the scenario that you just witnessed. And some of you may be confused as to who some of these people are and how they tie into the previous Cataclysm series that I've run. I have just recently released a recap, which if you'd like to get up to date on all of the established lore in my cataclysmic universe, that's an excellent start. So, where to from here? Well, for the moment, I'll be expanding on the current season of Dusk, aiming to get four episodes of that out to you each week. But don't fear, we will have some short survival content popping back before too long. And the stories of everyone else here, they are not gone, they are not forgotten. They are now part of something much larger. I would like to extend a thank you to the mod creators that put Aftershock together in the first place. I truly am excited to see where the mod will go in the future. As there is some fantastic groundwork laid by the law, I do hope to visit Sailors 4 once again in the future. For now though, I would like to ask you all if you enjoyed our delve into this icy moon please consider leaving a comment or a like to let me know if you enjoyed the show as for now i have been rykon you have all been awesome and until next time stay tuned